The publishing industry can feel opaque and mysterious, especially to new authors who are trying to break into it for the first time. But it shouldn't have to be this way. Oftentimes, there's a disconnect between an author's impression of how the publishing industry works and how it actually operates. There are a lot of misconceptions and misunderstandings about the publishing industry, which is why I created this channel in the first place. So to combat this, today I wanted to do a roundup of information from interviews I've conducted over the past year with literary agents from top agencies. The question that I asked all of these agents is, what is one thing that you wish emerging authors knew about the publishing process or the traditional publishing industry? So I'm really excited to share their insights and my thoughts on their responses today. If you want to read the full interviews, they're all available in my newsletter archive on chapter-break.com. You can also find the link in the description. Before we get into the insights from the amazing literary agents today, it would mean a lot to me if you hit that thumbs up button. It really helps out my channel. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you're new here and haven't yet joined our amazing community. Every week, I either talk about the publishing industry like today's video, since that is my professional background, or I talk about an aspect of how to improve your work in progress. I also have a free resource specially created for my YouTube community. It's called my Story Self-Assessment Worksheet, and it's designed to help you identify areas to improve in your manuscript based on how it is right now. Downloading that is going to opt you into the free version of my newsletter from which I'm pulling the quotes that we're going over today. I also have deeper dive content available as a premium level of my newsletter. So I encourage you to check all of that out. The link is in the description. The first thing that literary agents wish you knew about the publishing industry is that the publishing industry is slower now than ever. Anne Rose, a literary agent at the Tobias Literary Agency, had this to say. These past few years, our slow industry has slowed down even more. Things are slowing down at the acquisition stage, which means we as agents are forced to also slow down. So if you're currently in the process of waiting to hear back on your queries, know that it isn't anything you've done wrong. It's just the current status of the industry. Similarly, if you are on submission with editors at publishing houses with your agent, but you're not hearing back, know that this is just the new normal. Many editorial teams now have leaner staff, which means it takes them longer to get through submissions from agents. This can lead to a larger backlog that takes them longer to get through. Know that agents are really bummed by the slow moving industry as well. After all, they don't get paid until and unless they make you a book deal. So you are not alone in your frustrations that the publishing industry is moving at a snail's pace. The next insight that literary agents want you to know about the publishing industry is that everyone's journey looks different. Here's what Amy Bishop Wizix, a literary agent at Trellis Literary Management has to say. It's very easy to look at everyone else around you getting the things that you want. An agent, a six-figure deal, an award, media hits, and only focus on that. Some people hit it big out of the gate, and that's terrific. Some people are on the slow and steady track and their third or fourth or fifth book hits big. Be patient with yourself and with your own process. Online writing communities have a ton of benefits for emerging authors in that they can find community and support. But I think they can also lead to feelings of jealousy and envy because you may be seeing people announce their book launch or announce that they got an offer of representation. And you can get caught up in feeling behind because you haven't gotten there yet. But know that not everybody is an overnight success and someone else's success doesn't mean that you're not going to find your own in due time. Your journey is still valid, even if it doesn't go exactly the way you wanted or expected it to. The next thing that literary agents want you to know about the publishing industry is that getting a book deal is very competitive. Here's some insight from Cece Lyra, a literary agent at PS Literary. Most people understand that breaking into other creative industries, for example, film or theater, is tough, but for some reason, quite a few people do not understand that publishing is one of those businesses. Writing a compelling book requires a lot of talent and strategic dedication. It takes much more than simply writing a book to get a book deal, especially from a big five publishing house. Getting a literary agent, which gives you access to these publishers, is very competitive. And then it is very competitive to get an offer from one of these publishing houses. 
So if this is ultimately a goal of yours, it is important to work hard on your craft and put in the time and dedication to becoming the strongest storyteller you can be. Getting a book deal with a major publishing house is not unlike training to become a professional basketball player or practicing music to get into an elite ensemble. It is very selective. That's not to discourage you at all, but you should be realistic with yourself and understanding that it is very selective. The next insight that literary agents want you to know about publishing is that a rejection does not mean your work is bad. Alexandra Levick, a senior literary agent at Writer's House, had this to say. A pass on your query or a pass later on from an editor is not someone saying your work is bad. They are simply saying, this is not for me right now. That may be because they have another similar project or it isn't right for their tastes or any other number of reasons, but it isn't automatically an assessment of how good your writing is. I know how discouraging and disheartening it can be to receive a no from a literary agent. It can make you wonder if you're good enough to be traditionally published. But the truth is that a no from an agent doesn't mean you're unpublishable or a bad writer or that your story sucks. It just means that you're not a right fit for that agent. Agents are very, very selective in what clients and projects they take on because they only have enough time and energy to put effort behind a select few projects to present to publishing houses. They have to spend a lot of time working on that book with you, and they have to feel very confident in its potential for success to pitch it passionately to publishers. So you want agents to be selective in that way because that's going to be how they best represent you and your story. If you're struggling to figure out what a literary agent's rejection might mean, I have another video that helps you decode different types of rejections, so check that out. The next thing that literary agents wish you knew about publishing is that trend chasing doesn't work. Here's some insight from Antoinette Van Sloopman, an associate literary agent at Irene Goodman. Because the market is constantly changing and redefining new trends, it's always better to write the story that you want and not what you think agents or publishers are looking for. As an agent, I can often tell when a book is written purely for the joy and love for the craft or genre, which I don't consider something that can be taught. The way I interpret this is that trying to game the publishing industry by writing in whatever someone claims is trending in a given year is really not the best approach. The best stories are born out of a true passion and desire to tell that story. Also, chasing trends just isn't likely a way to build a sustainable career for yourself as an author. So instead, just focus on writing what you personally feel compelled to write. The next thing that literary agents wish you knew about publishing is that it's essential to focus on what you can control. Kiana Nguyen, an agent at Donald Mass Literary Agency, had this to say. This is a business that fundamentally runs on rejection. Every book cannot be sold. With that in mind, you will be able to remove any personal or emotional expectations and better focus on the elements you can control, your craft and your work. Keep your eyes on what you can control and you'll be more fulfilled and better able to handle the industry machine. The truth is that so much of publishing is out of your control. If you go the traditional route, you're not going to have total control over how much marketing or publicity budget your book receives. No matter how you publish, you're not gonna be able to control how readers react to it. You're not gonna be able to control if it makes bestseller status or not. So it's best to keep your mind focused on what you can control, which is making this story the best it can possibly be. The final thing that literary agents wish you knew about publishing is that you must be prepared for a lot of waiting. Here's some insight from Hannah Van Vels Osbury, a senior literary agent at Bel Castro Literary Agency. The path to publication is filled with a lot of waiting. Many writers spend a long time querying and then a long time on submission and then a long time waiting for their book to come out. I've sold books that don't come out for another five years yet. And I think it can be challenging for many people to understand that the general slowness is part of the industry, not a reflection on the creator or the quality of their work. If you want to be traditionally published, it's pretty essential to be flexible on your timeline. It's likely going to be at least a year from the time that you sign your book deal to seeing the book out on the shelf, sometimes a lot longer, maybe sometimes shorter, but typically longer. And that doesn't mean at all that your agent and publisher aren't excited to get your book in reader's hands. They wouldn't have signed you if they didn't want to get books in the reader's hands. But as we talked about at the beginning of this video, 
publishers are very slow moving and they need to bake in enough time to turn your manuscript into a high quality product. I hope these insights today helped you better understand agents' perspectives on the industry and what you can expect going into the traditional publishing process. I know it can be hard to find ways to peek behind the curtain in publishing, so I hope today's video did that. I really wanna hear from you in the comments how you liked the format of today's video. I know it's a bit different than my standard videos and I have a ton of amazing interview content that I'd love to share more of if you all are enjoying it. As I mentioned earlier, if you'd like to read the full interviews and also if you'd like to automatically receive all my future interviews in your inbox, go ahead and subscribe to Chapter Break. The link is in the description below. You can also download my free story self-assessment worksheet as a freebie and that's going to automatically opt you in. Before you head out, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you liked this video, it really helps out my channel. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We would love to have you join us. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.